Hello. Hello. Selena and I have another sentence. Well, actually, we have a couple sentences, but we're going to start with one. We have a new sentence that's really fun and really interesting. I know some of you have already had this lesson, um, but that's okay. If you've already had it, you can follow up again, or you can watch this one and then do the next one if you want to. But here is our new sentence. Are you ready for this? Go. Go. Um, go. Oh, so is this a sentence? Come back. Is this a sentence? Uh, yes. Do, does it have an action? Yes. Does it tell you to do something? Yeah. Okay. Um, how did you know I was talking to you, though? Because you were looking at me. I was looking at you. Uh, if we were at a lesson and I said go, um, I wouldn't have to just look at you for you at the able to know that I was talking to you, but I, I was looking right at you. Okay, so go is a complete sentence. So is what part of the sentence is go? Uh, the verb or the yeah. It's the action. It's what's happening in our sentence. But that's the only word we have in this magical sentence, go. Go. So can it be a sentence if it just has a verb? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, who is it that, or what is it that go? Uh, the person or thing you're looking at. The person I was talking to. So, we can write it like this. I was talking to you, but I didn't say it. Um, I didn't have a word in my sentence, but you knew that I was talking to you. I put it in parentheses because it wasn't part of our original sentence. You, it was like I said, you go. Right? That's what, it, that's what happened. She went. Um, but I said, I said go. But I meant you go. So these this is a funny kind of sentence. These types of sentences are really kind of cool. This, this um, subject is an implied subject, meaning I didn't say it, but I meant it and you knew I meant it. So I don't have to say, you go. I can just say, go, and it's understood between us that I mean you. Um, so this, like I said, this is called um, an elliptical construction, and elliptical comes to us from the Greek elliptikos, meaning broken or damaged, and you can see that this sentence, um, there it is, <laughs> uh, you can see that this sentence is kind of broken. There's parts that aren't there, or there's missing, but when we have the implied subject, when we see you go, we see that it looks like a complete sentence then. Okay, uh, so the predicate is all we have in the sentence. The sentence just has an action. Go. Okay, we're gonna set up another one. Reset our circles and our arrows. Okay, are you ready for another sentence? Wash the windows. What's the action? What's happening? Uh, wash. Wash. Do you want to cut wash and put it there? Move go out of our way. Could have been go wash the windows. But we're looking at wash the windows. Okay. Do we have an answer for who is it that or what is it that wash? Uh, no, not really. Wash the uh, whom or what? Wash the windows. Okay. So this sentence has a predicate um, and our direct object, the windows. If I say wash the windows, do you know, do you think there's an implied subject? Do you think there's somebody I'm talking to? Who do you think I'm talking to? Uh, you. you. So we would write you in parentheses and it is our who is it that or what is it that? You. So in this case, we also had a sentence that had an implied subject. We don't have to say, you wash the windows. In fact, it would be weird if I walked up to you and said, you wash the windows. <laughs> so we don't have to say, you wash the windows for it to be understood that what I mean is for, for you to be the one to wash the windows. Wash the windows. Wash was our predicate. You was our implied subject. 
and our direct object was the windows. You wash the windows. Okay. I have one more prepared for you. And then I can't wait to see all the sentences you come up with. Maybe they're sentences that you hear your parents say at home or me in class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so what is the action? What's happening here? Uh, think. 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 And what is you? Uh, Does it answer the question, who is it that think? What is it that think? Or is it think whom or what? Thinking whom. Thinking whom or what? So, thank you. If it was the other way around, if it was, you was over here, it would be you think. You think. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this sentence so far has a predicate and um, a direct object. And now let's think about what our, um, what our implied subject would be. So, who is it that thank you? Uh, I. I thank you. I thank you. So in parentheses, our implied subject is I. I thank you. It would sound really weird if we spoke that way. Like, like you, wash the windows. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes in the English language things are said um, said differently than like some people in different places say things differently or have different ways of forming sentences but we can all kind of understand them I know when we read our postcards from around the world and people who you can tell English isn't their first language and they say things like I thank you or um, like some of those weird things they have articles in the like they they use articles strangely or they don't use articles at all so it's really actually kind of cool to see other ways of creating sentences so i hope to see many types of sentences lena has a question uh i'm going back to our conversation about set down set down oh if go is a hold sentence. on hold on selena i don't know if you've seen the other sentence analysis lessons so we had this conversation about sat down and she had a lot there were a lot of gears turning in there on what like whether it was a sentence or not and I said we're gonna get to that and we got to it and she remembered okay so what do you think about sat down if goes a sentence wouldn't sat down be a sentence also so she's saying this she's saying is sat down a sentence sat down What's your predicate? Um, sat. She says sat is her predicate. Okay. And who is it that or what is it that's that? Um, Sorry, I was just looking for a previous word. Is it you sat? Or is it I sat? I think it could be I think. I sat? I think we both sat. Uh, <laughs> whom or what? Down? Down. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Down hmm. is describing sat. Oh, no. <laughs> she thought she was ready, but she has, she's not quite ready. Okay, she's saying sat is here. She's saying it's implied that she sat. Uh, implied right there, down, that, where you sat, is that how you sat, is it why you sat? Um, how did I sit, down? Yeah. I sat, why? No, it's not why. 
Hmm. Well, she's going to continue to work on her sentence, sat down, and decide if she really thinks it's a sentence or not. <laughs> um, sentence analysis can be really fun. You can, um, so often, many, like we write out a sentence and a couple people have different ideas on how to analyze it because they think different parts are doing different work. And so just kind of like sat down. Um, just, it depends on what she's trying to say. We're, we're still waiting. So, okay. I hope you enjoyed elliptical constructions. This is some fun work. Um, remember, ellipticos comes to us from, or elliptic comes to us from the Greek ellipticos, meaning broken or damaged. So it's like a sentence with a missing part. But as you saw, it doesn't have to be missing. We can add it in. And if, it's, if you're adding it in, remember, put parentheses because it wasn't part of your original sentence. Hey, we're here with another elliptical construction. Um, I <laughs> realized that I had another example that I wanted to give you. So here's one more sentence. It's a fun one. He spends like a millionaire. He spends like a millionaire. I'm going to move this off and we'll use chart A. So I'm going to move you into this other view so you can see the questions better. Okay, so let's analyze this, Selena. Um, what is the action? What's happening here? Spends. He spends. Sorry, I took the scissors right from you. Spends. Who is it or what is it that spends? Uh, he. He spends. He spends whom or what? Do we have a whom or what? No. Okay. To whom or to what? No. Okay. So I guess we're going to have to move into our orange arrows. Um, he spends by whom or by what, like a millionaire? He spends where, like a millionaire? Mm -mm. He spends when, like a millionaire? No. He spends how, like a millionaire? Mm, Maybe. Sense. He spends from what, from where, like a millionaire? He spends what for, like a millionaire? He spends why, like a millionaire? Uh, no. He spends with whom or with what, like a millionaire? He spends by, mean of, by means of whom or by means of what, like a millionaire? So I think how was the best one for that. He spends how? Like a millionaire. Okay, so this sentence has a subject, a predicate, and a manner, an adverbial extension of manner. What is the, what is the implied subject. We've talked about a lot about, uh, or no, I'm sorry, we've talked a lot about implied subjects. What is the implied object? What is he spending? Money. Say it louder. Money. Money. We can tell that the implied object that is being spent is money by the context of the sentence. So you can have, um, you can have an implied subject or an implied direct object by depending on the context of your sentence. So he spends like a millionaire. He spends money like a millionaire. The sentence makes sense both ways. Okay, now it's the end of our elliptical construction sentences. I hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing your follow-up and using both implied subjects and implied objects. Thank you.